We're here today in Metac Training Centre and uh, this is showing you the facility and um, we're going to look at a burner that's been given trouble and uh, one of our ex-candidates is having difficulty with it in the field and we said bring it in and we'll have a look at it. We're going to explain how the burner works and the fault is occurring with it and um, we'll go through, we'll have set it up in a boiler so we'll be doing this in parts and as a result you'll see what happens with the burner and how it works. This is the burner, it's an RDB, on the back of the Tesla's it's an RDB 2.2 and um, it's a standard rail burner, you can see the blast tube inside in the unit you see the nozzle and the electrodes you can see more of that in a few minutes control box, the oil pump, solenoid, coil, uh, this man has got his pressure gauge still attached to it and the photo cell, spare photo cell even, he has two of them because he's tried two control boxes and two photo cells on this appliance and still can't get it to work. So we're going to take it further now, we'll set it up in one of the boilers and we'll have a look and see what's happening and then we'll look at the diagnostics of it and see if we figure out the problem. Alright, now we have the burner set up with the oil and electricity connected up and we're getting this shot of flame just starting and stopping straight away. Uh, I have a feeling it's the problem in the sunlight. We have a pressure gauge but we're not getting pressure on it because the sunlight's not lifting long enough. So we'll try and change the sunlight and see what that changes the whole thing about. Sunlight on this is just positioned over the top of the pump quite easily, we have power isolated, we know it's off um, so I'll just plug off the sunlight and we'll replace the sunlight just roll back the top, just hand tight and that's the thing there now, right, we'll turn it back on and let's see what happens Right, we have it working. Uh, the engineer, when he was looking at it, he probably didn't see the flash starting off and got the signal that the pump was running or the motor was running all the time, which is indicating him, to him that this, the photo cell or control box is faulty. He has changed those and evidence where we had the full pair of photo cell with it, but not realizing that the other problem was there. We still have to solve the problem totally, but it could be an airlock in the system because it's just put in the workshop today now for this. So um, that's probably, yeah, his error. Um, so essentially it's okay now. The, the initial problem there was solving it. So I just had to vent it now again. There's oil in the system there, let it go, and it's just stopped for a minute. But just a matter of venting it, and it'll be away. That's one of the problems you see with a, a small burner, real burners. Um, <coughs> as I say, sound like coil or replaceable parts. Most engineers would have carried them in the van. Yet the air intake on this side can be fitted with snorkel from bringing outside air in. Um, you have the oil pump obviously delivering the oil. You have an ignition system in there that's igniting the flame. Servicing those it means stripping down the whole burner, stripping down the whole boiler. Cleaning everything out, replacing the nozzle, the wear, need to be changed every year. And that's a lot of what happens to the service. But the most important thing when they're finished, the use of an analyzer. And we've got through an analyzer there now and after we bleed it off. Okay, our next thing is to check the combustion process and see if it's working correctly. We do that in two ways, one with an analyzer as we mentioned, but before we put an analyzer into an oil boiler, we always ensure that it's clean because if damage the analyzer does not. So we use a small pump. I may certainly not there. And with 10 pumps. With a piece of paper, especially supplied, that uh, brings the smoke through, and you can see the darkness on the spot on the paper. And this is checked using um, a gauge, past the gauge, and 
essentially you see what number the smoke is and you record that on your on your service file. So if you see there one is is not three. So it's between one and two. So that's quite okay. Now considering I haven't serviced that burner or anything, it's not too bad to start with. Now to service it and everything else it could be even better than that. So that's the first process. The next thing we're going to do is use the combustion analyzer. If that's a combustion analyzer, what it's going to tell us is how efficient the flame is working at. So we put that in there halfway into the flue and it starts giving us some readings. The readings we're looking at O2 CO2 parts per million this carbon monoxide ratio, temperature, flue gas temperature and efficiency. So the O2 there is starting to come down at the moment. Normally the manufacturer's instructions will tell us that we need about 12 on the CO2. Uh, we vary between 11 and 12, but I'd always look to see that there's sufficient air. And personally we're looking at this top number, because I want to ensure that it be clean when I go back to it next time and not all uh, sutted up. Because if oil is sutted up, that's onboard oil. And obviously you're not getting any great value of that as a consumer. So you can see we're looking at 5.8 and it's just got up the temperature. And 11.2 uh, and 38, that's X air coming in there. But what we do is quick print on that now. And this is what a customer should be given at the end of a service is a printout of all their emissions. And the engineer should always keep a copy for himself just to prove that that's what it was like the day he was there. So our printout is shown as there now what we've got. We can extract that now in case it fires up again. And we have on there, can we see this? Okay. We have as light oil is burning, the day is date and the time. It's O2 is 6. It's CO2 parts per million is 73, that's going up the flue. The CO2 is 11. The ratio is 0007. Uh, pressure, that's only uh, air pressure, whatever was not applicable there. The flue gas temperature, the flue gas net is, uh, is 106, gross is 123. And the efficiency of that burner now on service is 95.1% efficient, and that's combustion efficiency. Not too bad if the service to bring it up from that, because we're talking about a good boiler there, and uh, the baffles are tight enough in it that's keeping the heat in, so the flue gas temperature will be reduced. As a result, the boiler will work better. So the more modern boiler, modern burner, kept maintained, makes all the difference. So that's uh, just an overview of an oil boiler, an oil burner, and a fault that we discovered in it and how, how we fixed it. Alright, thank you.